who was convicted by the session judge Heer on October 24, 1975, in session case number 88 of 1974 under section 309 and 302 of Indian Penal Code. The sentence to undergo temporary imprisonment for three months for the offence under section 309 and the imprisonment for life for the offence punishable under section 302, subject. Uh, subject to section 428 uh, of the new criminal procedure code the prosecution case bt state was under pulavai is a wife of applicant sadhu pandugar sindhe they live in village jena uh, port in tarun uh, ambushgai district bell sadhu has three sons baburam uh, baburi vana jaram and panduram uh, for her uh, for her she had one more son named vetkar For her, who was aged one and half year, Pulavai has physically illness since about one year prior to the death of the Vettel, August second, nineteen seventy four. In spirit of medical treatment, the uh, the illness was precise thing. Vettel was also suffering from rickets from about two months prior to his death. At the distance of about two hundred feet from the house of Sadhu, there is a well. On the night of August first. 1974 the applicant was uh, the complainant was sleeping in one part of the house while with uh, while the accused fula wife was sleeping in the other part near the door with his children uh, baburan vana uh, panduram and vetal fula wife has chained the door from her uh, from her side before she want to sleep next morning the morning of august 2nd 1974 after sunrise the applicant uh, the complainant sadhu found the uh, found the door open he also found that fula wife and vetal was missing she saw some people collected near the door saying one woman has fallen into the well the complainant also went to the well some people then took out fula wife from the well along with the child fula wife was alive vetal was dead The complainant then went to the police station at Dinapur on the same day. His statement was the recorded by the sub inspector Bosavi who registered offences under section 302 and 309 IPC against Phula Wai went to the bell and made inquest report and panchnama of the sense of the offence. The child was sent to the dispensary at Dinapur for post mortem while Phula Wai was sent there for treatment. After completing the investigation, a charge sheet was filed against her under Section 302 and 309 of IPC. In the court of the Judicial Magistrate, first class, Ambar Yogi alleged that the accused Phula Bai was ailing for a long time and was fed up their life and hence of out of frustration. She took a jump along with the deceased infant Vithal to end her life and the life of Vithal because Vithal was also not keeping well. Good morning, sir. I would like to present the defence to you. The defence of insanity is a, a law that protects a person who is incapable of understanding the nature of the act done by him. Under Section 84 of IPC, a person of unsound mind uh, shall act in nothing as offence committed by uh, someone who is currently unable to know the nature of the act or does what is wrong or contrary to the legislation or due to the lack of sound mind. The accused was in a state of unsoundness, uh, the mind at the time of the act. She was unable to know the nature of the act or do what was either wrong or contrary to the law. Lack of the intention. There is a well-established principle, actus non facet rem nisi mensitia, uh, which in literal sense mensitia in act does not make offender liable without a guilty mind. The intention or guilty mind of the offender is an integral part of the while committing a crime. The defense of insanity is a law that protects a person who is incapable of understanding the nature of the act done by her. Irresistible impulse. The accused is suffering from the irrespective impulse. It is a sort of insanity uh, where she is unable to control her actions even she has an understanding that he, uh, the act was wrong. There are certain rules of incapacity to know right or wrong. The word incapacity to know the nature of the act embodied in section 84 of IPC refers to a state of mind when the accused was unable to appreciate a fact of the conduct 
It would mean the conduct of the accused in every possible sense of word and such insanity must strip away his ability to understand and appreciate physical effect of his act and incapacity to know the nature of the act in order to use the defense of insanity under the latest part of section 84 namely or to do what is either wrong or contrary to the law it is not necessary that accused should be completely insane his reason should not be completely insane but his reason should not be completely extinguished what are required is to be established that although the accused knew the physical effect of his act he was unable to know that he was doing what was the either wrong or contrary to the law. This part is essential in the section 84 to understand the medical insanity of the accused. In this connection, only on the circumstances that the body of the Fulawai was found along with the dead body of Vithal next morning. It is difficult to hold that the only inference which could be drawn by bad discovery on the next morning was necessarily that uh, the accused herself knowingly and intention intentionally jumped into the well to commit suicide. Although the burden of proof of the defense under section 84 is on the accused that the burden is not as a heavy on the accused uh, as on the prosecution. The state submitted referring to the panchnama of the sense of offense and other circumstances uh, that there was a wall uh, around the well. There could not be accidental fall. But that does not mean the possibility of the accused doing something uh, by reason of unsound mind, uh, unsound mind in a state where she was incapable of knowing what she was doing uh, at night was not possible. It cannot be totally ruled out and therefore the benefit doubt out to have given to her. To establish a defense based on the insanity, it must be ascertained at the time of uh, pertaining the act, the accused was in a such state of mind as she was unable to know the nature of the act committed by her. She didn't know the nature and the qualities of the act she was doing. Uh, she was unaware of the act. There is also possibility of the accused falling into the well uh, with the child. In that in state of mind, the benefit of doubt must be given to the accused even in respect of the offence under section 302 similarly for the same reason. The absence of the medical evidence to show the nature of the unsound, uh, unsoundness of mind. It was difficult to hold that the accused was no unsound in mind as to take ever her child and jump into the well. It has been repeatedly laid down by the court with regards to circumstantial evidence. That the court should avoid the tendency imagination playing tricks with circumstances after the minds come the conclusion that the person is morally guilty. The commission of an act and the burden of proof is always on the prosecution. According to the fact there was no one present at the incident spot, so it could not be as certain that Pula Bai posed the child or whether after the child jumped into, into the well where there was not I will just tell about the exact incident. The evidence of Sadhu, Punch and the police witness, there was no eyewitness to actual incident. There is no dispute that the accused Pulavai was keeping unwell since about one year prior to the death of Vital and there is no improvement on her condition in spread of treatment given to her. It is also not in dispute that the Vital was suffering since about a uh, couple of months prior to his death. Uh, Sadhu, uh, prosecution witness 1, is a husband of the accused and the Anurath, prosecution witness 3, is her nephew. The evidence on record shows that the relation between Sadhu uh, and accused were good. Uh, I thought she is no interest to disbelieve the evidence of Sadhu and Anurath were clearly goes to show that the uh, morning, uh, morning of 2nd August 1974, the accused Fula was found into the well uh, with her child with her, which tied, uh, tied her so much uh, by means of sari and he found death with Anurad and other what um, went uh, inside the well. Uh, in capacity to know the right or wrong, in order to use the defense of insanity, under section 84 uh, of IPC, she doesn't know what is uh, uh, what she did between good and evil. Uh, though she is committed of offense, yet she could not be guilty of any offense against any law. Ula Bai was suffering from medical illness for a year, so neither did she have any intention nor any key planning, so their incident would not have become a 
309 of IPC held on murder but in accident. There are landmark judgment. Ratanal vs. State of MP 2002. It was well established by the court that the crucial part of time which the unsound mind should be established is the time when the is actually committed and whether the accused was in such a state of mind as to be entitled to benefit from section 84 can only be determined from the circumstances that preceded, attended and followed the crime. In other words, it is the precedent behavior attended and subsequent to the extent that may be relevant in determining the mental condition of accused at the time of the commission of the offenses but not remain in time. In the case of Jalal versus Delhi administration, here the applicant killed a small girl with a knife and even stable two other people was convicted under section 302 of the IPC. It was pleading by the accused that he was suffering from insanity with, uh, with the limit of section 84 IPC. It was observing that the accused after being arrested have uh, given normal and intelligent uh, statement to the investigation officer. Nothing abnormal was noticed in, this, uh, in his behavior. Considering all these findings, the Supreme Court held that the applicant was not insane at the time of the commission of the act and was well aware of the consequences of his act. He was held guilty uh, from murder under section 302 IPC. There are some other related cases in Kabla of India versus West Bengal state. It was held that there is no motive for murder. Uh, the accused made no plea or not attempt to remove any weapon. The accused was entitled to benefit from section 84 and hence the accused was proved in chain at the time of commission of the offence and was guilty of uh, capable homicide and not for murder. In another case, uh, Srikant Anandra of Bhusle versus State of Maharashtra, it was held that the accused was suffering from uh, psychopendia and he was incapable of comprehending the nature of the act committed by him. Uh, therefore, he was not guilty of murder and will be given the benefit of section 184 of IPC. Uh, in the case Hari Singh God versus the state of Madhya Pradesh, the Supreme Court observed that the section 84 set out the legal test of responsibility in cases of alleged men mental insanity. There is no defi uh, definition of mind unsoundness in IPC. However, the court have mainly treated this expression as equivalent to insanity. But the term in, uh, insanity itself does not have a precise definition. It is the term used to describe various degrees of mental disorder. So every mentally ill uh, person is not a ipso facto exempt from criminal responsibility. A distinction must be made between legal insanity and medical insanity. A court is concerned with legal insanity, not medical insanity. The fact is, uh, there is no intention and pre-planning. So it does not fall under 302 and 309. It is an accident by suicide. So there is uh, another case. Which is Jihan Kaur versus State of Punjab 1996. In this case, five judge bench of the Supreme Court upheld the constitutional validity of IPC section 309. However, in 2008, the Law Commission in its report said that an attempt to commit suicide needed medical and psychiatric care and not punishment. The accused must be held guilty of offence under section 302 and 309. The section 84 of the IPC did not apply to this case as she had not discharged the burden on her of the proving she was the time of commission of the offence by reason of unsoundness of mind, incapable of knowing the nature of the act or that she was doing what was either wrong or contrary of law. As we have earlier mentioned that there was no uh, on present at the incident spot, so it could not be ascertained that the pula by uh, the child or rather after the child jumped into the well, there was no eyewitness to tell about the exact incident. And there is no evidence provided by the prosecution side. In the case Surin Mishra vs. State of Jharkhand, it was pointed out that, very, uh, that every person suffering from mental illness is not ipso facto exempt from criminal liability. There are landmark judgments, Shine Kumar vs. State of Kerala 2015. In this case, the accused is younger, son of his parents, the victim. The accused was aged about 40 years at that time. The incident occurred so. Uh, 
September 2015 when the accused was home alone with her two victims. A case was registered after investigation. A final report was filed alleging commission of offense punishable under Section 302 of IPC by accused. Accused denied the charge frame and did not accept plea of insanity set out by accused. It was further stated that no motive has been proved for accused to cause death his parents and the fact is that he had no not made attempt to run away was indicated that he was insane. Here is the absence of medical uh, uh, evidence to show the nature of the unsoundness of mind. It is difficult to hold that the accused was so unsound in mind as to take even her uh, child jump into the well. It is uh, it, ha uh, it has been repeatedly let down by the court with regarding the circumstantial evidence that the court should avoid the tendency of imagination playing trick with circumstances after the uh, mind coming in the conclusion of the person is um, uh, morally guilty. As a defense of Anastasia she didn't know the nature and the qualities of the act she was doing. She uh, was unaware of the act. At that time, she is suffering from that disease. 